child born present, um, but for the recording, I would just like to um, call the roar as to who is present and who is not. So, um, what will be on one? Yeah. Who is Gray? Absent. Arden Lerner Here. Don Gosling? Here. Summer Sigler? Here. Samantha Torres? And James Sanders? It's here. So, a quorum being present, we can conduct our business. Mr. Okay. Chairman, before you get too far into the meeting, go ahead, Don. Just requesting that uh, I, I, I actually look at the videos a lot, and sometimes we don't speak very loudly. We could just remember that the microphone is a long ways away, and it would just help if we spoke loudly enough so that other people can hear it afterwards. Thank you. I'll, I'll try to project to the inanimate object in the middle of the room. Well, it moves around, so. Um, Thank you. Is there any way to tell whether my voice is being picked up or not? So I do see it moving on the microphone just a bit. Um, I would offer just a tip. A lot of times I do look, go back and listen to the recordings. And sometimes if you use an earpiece, you can amplify the volume more than a device to hear. Sometimes it is hard um, to get the sound. Um, okay. But yes, I can see that the microphone is working. Thank you. Um, all right. So let me go through the packet here. Uh, let me just go through the preliminary announcements. So uh, So uh, we kind of called it order. So uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. And if there are no objections, the agenda will be accepted as submitted. So ordered. Approval in three minutes of March 5, 2019, and March 26. I received. Um, some corrections and in the email and I and when I looked at the packet the corrections were not incorporated. So let's first look at the March five meeting minutes. Um and it was my understanding um well, I mean you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding that you were asked to submit the Minutes that you read the meeting on March 5 when we elected officers. Is that correct? Or and then we got a copy of the minutes and we have for the March 5th. We have a copy of the minutes for March 5th. So, with respect to so the we're in, March, I don't see them. In, in the, there it is. Sorry. Okay. With, with respect to the March 5 meeting minutes, are there any corrections or additions to be made to the minutes? Don? I'm sorry, there, there are so many mis errors, omissions, typos in all of the minutes, I would really strongly recommend that they re be sent back to the person that uh, drafted them with a, co with a copy of the corrections and give them an opportunity to, to resubmit them, addressing the issues that are, are mentioned here. You, we don't want to say- I, I understand your request. I, I thought we had taken one at a time, but I can certainly entertain the resubmission and corrections. I have the corrections that you submitted, and, um, and I, I, I did not, Go through with with staff uh, on the corrections, and I, and I should have, but I, I didn't. I didn't have an opportunity before this meeting. My concern is that it would take too much of our valuable time to deal with that when we could just send it back to the the, the author and have him redo it, okay. or address address the issues. I should say, it's, it's, there's it's multiple a, multiple persons. Right? Is that right. a form of a motion, Tom? Yes, it is. It is more of a form of a motion. It's I make a motion that we uh, we send the minutes back to the authors with a copy of the the notes that I, I submitted to you so they could be addressed. Okay. Second. A second. It's important and to have right. and seconded that we would be minutes from March 5, March 19, and March 26, I believe. Yeah. Um 
be returned to the authors of those minutes along with corrections submitted by Mr. Gosney and anyone else who would like to make additions or corrections to the minutes. All in favor, please say aye. We can't. We can't. We cannot take that kind of because of Brown Act. Okay. So we can do no objections or a roll call. Okay. If there are no objections, the motion is adopted. Okay, good. So we'll move on now to um, anticipated future meetings of May 21 and June 11. Of those present, since we don't have those who aren't here, are there any conflicts with either May 21 or June 11? I heard a, a sound. Um, listen, is there is there a hand raised? Uh, not at this time. Okay. Don? These particular nights, I mean, I, I'm willing to make a sacrifice, but I mean, some of us attend our city council meetings. You've got four out of the five cities in West Contra Costa have the city council meetings on these nights, Tuesday nights. And it, it's sometimes we have critical business. I, I'm supposed to be at, at city council meeting right now right. because there's a, a ballot measure that is being discussed that I'm the primary proponent on. We, we spent a quarter of a million dollars on. If we can review these and possibly see if, if we're it's amenable to have a different date. I mean, it's not tonight, but not with only four people here or five. But, uh, but just uh, for our future meetings, consider some dates other than Tuesday nights. Um, are the council meetings only on Tuesday nights? Except San Pablo. And San Pablo is? Monday night. Monday night. And board meetings are Wednesday night. Correct. So Thursdays would be the ultimate day where there are are there any council meetings on Thursdays to anyone's knowledge? The neighborhood council meeting. Neighborhood once, meeting. Once, once every other month. month or once a month. And is that on the first, second, or third Thursday? Third. Third Thursday. And my union meetings are the second Thursday. Yeah, I mean, it's a problem. I, I understand. No, that's all right. Um, first Thursdays of the month, are they available? Yes. For me. Okay. With respect to the district, first Thursday in June, I mean, first Thursday in May is gone. First Thursday in June? Um, June 6th. June 6th? That grad, sounds like graduation. It's graduation. So, I want to miss that. Mm -hmm. So, basically, the entire first week of June, we have graduation. Right. Well, I mean, we might just consider after June. Okay. So, with respect to July, the first Thursday, <laughs> Independence Day. <laughs> Is that a problem? <laughs> well, there's no council meeting on that either. Oh, uh, no. I, we, we won't have a conflict with the council meeting. And, in Richmond, at least the fireworks are on the third. I'm sorry. <laughs> at least Richmond City Council, I just noticed that they're they're canceling two of their, their three council meetings in, in July. And they, they probably wouldn't happen on the fourth anyway. No. And they're up for recess in August. Yeah, recess, August is recess. So uh, um, I, I may be whine, crying and whining when their problem doesn't really exist so much. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's backtrack. We have the 21st was um, council meetings for San Pablo and Richmond, is that correct? Nobody sure. cares about San Pablo. Monday nights are San Pablo. Monday, Monday nights are San Pablo. And but they're also RNCC meetings and, and CBOC meeting. Do we know anything about Penol? There are uh, Tuesdays. Tuesday. Hercules, Hercules, Penol, El Cerrito, Richmond, all on Tuesdays. All on Tuesday. Well, um, it's not something that has I, to be decided tonight, but just yeah, for I, consideration. I, I, 
I mean, I mean, it's, I'm in a dilemma as to which conflict we want to, um, which city we want to be in conflict with, because it'll be necessarily be um, delaying the work of the committee. So, when there's four of us from Richmond. Yes. And that's Tuesday night. But it's not every Tuesday night. Correct. It's three out of the four. <laughs> is, 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 it's, is the 21st of May a meeting night for the Richmond City Council? Probably, or I'm willing to miss it. Probably just talking about budget. Okay, well, the 21st of May looks, looks like that will stand. The 11th of June is uh, after graduation and the beginning of, right? So, any conflicts with the 11th of June? I'm not here. I'm not available. We have one conflict. Don? No, in fact, that's, that's the one Tuesday that City of Richmond does not meet. The second okay Tuesday, so that would be okay. Work. What would be after Tuesday? Sorry, I said I'm good for Tuesday. Okay, not Joe. Mark. Uh, fine. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we can have a quorum on Tuesday, the um, June 11th. So um, if there are no objections to the anticipated meeting dates of. May 21st and June 11th, and those will be adopted. Okay, now with respect to public comment, the public will have different opportunities to address the committee. The public can address the committee during public comment and before action or discussion. Before an action or discussion item, the public can provide public comment in person through the Zoom app and by telephone. Public comment will last approximately 10 minutes the time allotted for each speaker is two minutes. If you are attending the meeting in person, you will need to submit a request to address the board form to indicate your desire to speak during public comment on a non-agenda item before the item begins on an agenda item. If participating via Zoom, you will need to raise your hand by clicking on the appropriate icon in the Zoom app or by pressing star nine if accessing the meeting by phone. No yielding of time or substitution of speaker is permitted. The public will have an opportunity to make public comments on agenda items after the presentation for each discussion and action item. The time allotted for public comment on each action or discussion item and items not discussed on the agenda will be no more than 10 minutes and two minutes per speaker. Through the Brown Act, committee members cannot discuss items not on the agenda and do not usually respond to items presented by public comment. Special accommodations upon written request to the district, disability related modifications or accommodations, including auxiliary aids or services will be provided. Please contact the facilities office at 510-307-4545 at least 48 hours in advance of meeting. And now you're at public comment. Are there any hands raised? Not at this time. Not at this time. Any members for Kevin Clifford? No. I would like to just uplift quickly. I wasn't sure the best way to handle this, but we did receive comments from Supervisor Joya's office that are included in the packet. And Don has brought to the meeting today comments from uh, Maureen Toms um, for the committee. And so I'm not sure if now would be the right time to bring those yep. forward or if that's later in the agenda, but I wanted to highlight they wanted to make sure that their comments were brought to the committee. I would also, uh, I'm sorry, Chair. Go ahead. Uh, I would also like uh, these read right into the record, uh, these emails that I have, if it's possible. Yeah, I, I brought them with me to, to, to just that. Yeah. Yes. So I don't know if you actually want to read them into the record. That means someone actually verbalizes them and read them. And then we have the other two items brought forth um, by Melissa. Um, they have been handed out to the committee members. They would get attached to the minutes. That's where they would go. So whether or not you want to read them and 
in as public comment because they're not on the agenda itself, except for the two that were brought forth. Um, um, they are they would fall under the discussion of priority use for the four sites. You could save it there and read them all in, or you could just have them uh, attach them in however you think, want to do them. I think the appropriate part would be to have the, the ones that are germane to the site that's under discussion um, added. And we've already discussed the Adams site. So my question is for those that have brought them, uh, is, and, and we're talking about uh, the density. And Adams site is mentioned in the one from uh, Luis Tom's. And all four sites are on the agenda, so it would be right. appropriate. It would be okay. Okay. So, um, anyway, so I'd like to, to put them in with respect to this site. Okay, so we'll wait until we get to B1. I'll make it. Okay. I'll put my job a little low. Right, thank you. So, next item under, what's your name? The members of the public to public comment and we'll pick these things up with respect to the site. So let's move on to D1, the discussion of priority uses for the four sites. And um you and we should probably uh, we were taking them in alphabetical order before. So let's first uh, review what applies to the um Adams site, which I believe. Is the email from uh, Maurice Hans to Mr. Freeze? Okay. And it reads I'm unable to attend the meeting tonight, but I did review the packet. I noticed communication from Supervisor Joya was included in the packet, but the information below was not. Please be sure the committee is updated on the general plan and zoning designations for both CBU and Adams sites. Um, signed Maurice Toms, AICP, Deputy Director, Department of Conservation and Development for the county since this case, since this comes from Martinez. And it, she writes, Lewis, I've reviewed the PowerPoint presentation for the 7-Eleven Committee presented at the meeting last night. The information presented regarding the Seaview site and the Adams Middle School site was not accurate. In December 2023, the Contra Costa County Board of Supervisors adopted the sixth cycle housing element, which increases the density of both the Adams Middle School and Seaview sites. The Adams Middle School site, housing element site number 40, designation has a designation allowing 0 to 30 units per acre, which will allow 0 to 274 units on the site if all parcels were to be developed. The Seaview site, housing element site number 21 designation now has a designation of 17 to 30 units per acre, which would allow 136 to 237 units if both parcels were to be developed. Additional units can be achieved through a density bonus process for both sites. And then there's a reference. And the zoning code for the housing element sites was updated on January 16. 2024, the documents related to this action can be found under agenda item B6 for the County Board of Supervisors. The ordinance with development standards is located here with a link. The housing element also states that the county's commitment to work with other public agencies, i.e. WCCUSD, to provide technical assistance to get vacant surplus sites developed into housing. Please note that development below the minimum range of density would not be allowed. I'm happy to meet to discuss further or attend the next 7 11 committee meeting to provide clarification again signed William Toms. Um, my question you know, to Tara Realty is given the research you did on, uh, can I discuss it now? So Tara Realty is not present tonight. Scott's not here. Yeah, the no. gentleman with me here today is yeah. legal counsel. Well, we got what is your name? Bill Henderson. Thank you. And uh, my, my partner, Serene Abrahami, is, is in, in this bus. Okay. Do you have any cards by Jen? Yeah, we've all met before and I handed out my cards back then, but I can hand out my cards. Yes. Maybe. Um, I apologize. That's okay. One confusion of my hairline is your hairline, <laughs> Scott's hairline. 
Um, my question, yeah, my question relates to the CCNR uh, C view. It's my understanding that CCNR C view relate restricted it to single family dwellings. And does the, does the county's adoption of um, ordinances regarding to denser housing, is that permitted to override the CCNR? With respect to the CDU site, I think we would have to see how they put this into their housing element before we could answer that. So, all I've got is the email from Ms. Toms um, and uh, the attachment. So, we could we could look at how the housing element um, either recharacterize or potentially rezone those. So we'd have to look at that. I don't have the answer to that tonight. Jim? Yes, Doc. Sorry. Uh, I didn't go to law school. I'm going to defer to him. This man and Perry Mason, they're right up the same place as far as I'm concerned. But I did have to speak with Maureen Tom just a few days ago about this. And I mentioned the CCRs and she just threw it back in my face. that the, the county's actions supersede any and all CCRs. If it's just a CCR, but if they formally go through a zoning change in their housing element, she's indicating that the housing element they approved in January created this density. Yes. Can that be done within the zoning that was existing or did they rezone it? That was actually my question. She also said that the zoning for both C-Sites, CVU and Adams, was no longer accurate. Okay. Uh, this just her, her to me. Okay. Uh, so it, it, I think it needs to be looked at. Yeah. Fair point. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and haven't had the chance to do it in the last two hours since I've seen this, so. Well, what have you been doing? <laughs> Driving here. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, um, well, that's with respect. We have the, the two parcels. And well, let's see if there were. I'm looking at the attachments that followed the email. Say. Uh, and with respect to the CDU site, there was also a communication from uh, East Bay Regional Park District indicating that they wanted to um, connect two parts of the Bay Trail that um, touched upon the CDU site. And we have a representative from East Bay Parks who we met at the last meeting who's here with us tonight via Zoom. Okay. Um, well, we were, I was dealing, we were dealing with the Adams site initially, and then a uh, sea view came up in the, in this, um, in this email. So if there are no objections, I'd like to just, um, jump ahead to see you for, uh, just purpose of, of reviewing with, with respect to the email. So if she can uh, make a comment at this time, since the CDU site has come up, and we were asking about the CCNR, what specifically, um, there are two two parts to the CDU site. What specifically is the East Bay Regional Park District asking for? And perhaps you can, can you, can you bring her up on Zoom? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Great. I'm Sarah Reef, uh, Acting Real Property Specialist from the East Bay Regional Park District. I had sent an email to a few folks from your committee um, regarding the question that was brought up by committee member Samantha Torres. Is that the yes. name right? Yes. yes. Um, at the last meeting, um, Samantha had indicated that perhaps there was some kind of kind of an agreement and then I think she walked it back and said, no, there was an email that she had received saying that perhaps there was already plans for the trail to be placed through the Seaview site. And so I researched on my end as best I could. And so that's what my email was about. Okay. There are two uh, parts to the parcel at Seaview. One part was the part developed as a school, and the other part was... Um, it looks like it's used for recreational purposes. Um, and it's the two parts are divided by uh, Grizzly Creek, or excuse me, Garrity Creek. 
Charity. I'm trying to read this. Charity Creek. And so as the Bay Trail, yeah, the, both parcels are flanked by uh, railroad lines and also by high pressure gas line. So what part is the, what part of, the, of either parcel is the you know, East Bay Regional Park District interested in? Or is it an easement through both of them to connect the trail? Uh, yeah, it would be, I'm just seeing if there's a possibility for me to share my screen. Is that possible? Okay, uh, sure, just one moment. Let me sure. do that. And I'll go ahead and stop share. Okay, are you able to share your screen? Hmm, let's see. Am I able to share my screen? Great question. <laughs> I don't see do 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 an option to do that. Um, hmm. So I just promoted you to panelist, and so hopefully then the option. Hi. Okay. Well, let me see if I can do it now. Okay, so everyone is seeing the map? Yes. Great. Yes. So the orange line here, if you can see my little mouse, is um, the primary easement that we would be looking for on which to site uh, this segment of the San Francisco Bay Trail. And we were also perhaps looking at, at this crosshatch area as a connector into the community. Um, you know, we understand that the committee needs to go through their process of making the, declaring the property surplus, et cetera, et cetera. But this is what we would be hoping for so that we can close a portion of the 0.9 uh, linear mile segment of the Bay Trail that um, still remains to be connected between uh, Point Pinole and I believe it's Point Wilson. And I can probably show another graphic of that if you'd like to see the missing segment. Um, could you give the dimensions besides the linear part? What's the breadth of that easement? Oh, that is a great question. I do have that. Hold, please. Mm -hmm. My apologies that I don't have that right at hand. Let's see. Do you all have time for me to try to answer that, or would you prefer that I get back to you? No, I'm sorry. That that's a critical piece of information for me. Are we talking ten feet? Are we talking four hundred feet here? Um, I I think the reason I asked the question is because I'd like to know how many square feet, uh, or if you will, part of an acre of that parcel, the district would be giving up. And Certainly. I'm just reviewing my notes here. As you all know, I took over this project from my predecessor, Rachel Lem. So I'm seeing that the crosshatch area would be 20 feet wide, but I'm not sure about the length. Um, and I, I believe well, the orange portion would be 40 feet wide. Again, not sure about the length. Hmm. The nine tenths of a mile is 4,752 feet, according to my calculator. Wow, thanks. <laughs> and um, and then you say that's 20 feet wide? Uh, the crosshatch area, yes. That's proposed so, 20 feet wide. So uh, at 20 feet wide, that's 95,040 feet. And there's uh, 43 thousand five hundred sixty feet per acre so we can divide that through and, and um, so it's approximately 2.18 acres I'll go with your calculations <laughs> until I'm able to confirm otherwise but you clearly know your land stuff 
Yeah. Last month, I, I distinctly remember hearing 40 feet. And I, I'm not uh, for the width, for the width of the easement. Yes. I mean, again, I'm just recollecting my memory. Uh, and so I'm, I mean, 20 feet is obviously better than 40 feet, but 40 feet, that's a substantial, that, no, well, that, that would, that's that would, four and a half acres. Yeah, that, four and a quarter. So the portion that runs along the more, most, uh, what would you call that, northwesterly segment of the parcels, that would be 40 feet wide, and the cross-hatched area that was shown in red, uh, that would be 20 feet wide. And these are just proposed figures at this point. Design is not completed. Um, okay. Uh, question. How much of that land for your Bay Trail has to be on Seaview property as opposed to west of the, the fence line? As I understand it, and I am not a trail designer, but I, I can go back to our staff who are still working with consultants to design the trail segment. But as I understand it, they wanted to site the entire trail on the Seaview property due to issues with uh, wetlands in the area and of course the uh, location right next to the tracks there. Ms. Torres, you have a question? Go on. I went out there and walked it all, yeah, plus about a half mile in each direction uh, a week and a half, two weeks ago. And you know, I wouldn't even suggest going right next to the railroad tracks, that's no brainer. But it did seem like there was space between the the gully that had some water in it uh, and our fence line that might be used. I mean, if you're, even you're talking about five feet uh, out of the the 20, that saves us something. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it just, I'm looking at alternatives. I, I, I hate giving up any part of our property that we don't have to. I love the Bay Trail concept, but at the same time, uh, you start reducing the size of the property it makes it less uh, valuable to sell or or to or to uh, develop, uh, and that's a, that's a concern that I've got. Uh, um, okay. Okay, I can I I hear your comments. I appreciate that. I will um, take your comments back to our trails development staff who are working with a consultant to design the segment and let them know. Don, have you had a chance to review our um, website page for this segment of the trail? No, it was it, it, you're, one of your people. I, I wish I remember the name. Yeah, Suzanne Cindy. Wilson. Suzanne Wilson. Find out in a second. I could not find the email. Okay. I mean, yes, I received it. I did not do it. Apologies. I'm sorry, for some reason, I'm unable to hear you. I don't know why. Yeah, speak up. <laughs> sorry, they're, they're playing, having fun at my expense. Uh, I, I, I did get, I'm looking at the attachment. I have not had a chance to review it, though. I got busy and I apologize. Oh, yeah. No worries. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, have, I do have a couple other questions. It looks like on the northern end of it, you're planning to put the Bay, thra Bay Trail through the residential uh, streets. That's a proposed neighborhood access point. Okay, but we will. I mean, will the Bay Trail actually be designated as part of part of those streets or sidewalks? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I think I don't know that we would necessarily call it a segment of the Bay Trail. I, I, I'm guessing that it would be more like a neighborhood spur. Um, is there an existing tr sidewalk? uh in that location right now well i mean once you get into the neighborhood yes there is there I'm is looking... there's a sidewalk uh on the back side of these properties though it's it, it gets to uh, be a steep incline and you would almost ha certainly have to eminent domain some people's backyards if you continue that direction which i can't imagine that happening but I, I, i'm also concerned about the uh the southern end uh where the Bay Trail would be going. I mean, are you trying to take away take, take away part of the outfield of the baseball field that's there? Or? On your drawing, it just stops. Well, I think the reason that the drawing stops is because, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that the school district owns that property. So we would be in communication with that property owner separately. 
Yes, I, I'm just not quite sure. Uh, when you've got a, a limited recreational space, uh, this is not Fenway Park where you can you can give up part of your outfield and and, and make a big deal out of the big green wall. Uh, it, it would be reducing part of it. Although it was also pointed out that somebody could uh, you could just move the dam or the dang to a ball field you know, to accommodate the East Bay region. I mean the East Bay Regional Parks. I don't know, but I'm just curious about this because if you, it doesn't do any good to for us to give up our property if you can't connect it on either end of it, either side of it. You, you, you understand what I'm talking about? Yes, I think so. I think maybe what would be most helpful is if uh, perhaps at the next meeting, I can invite Suzanne Wilson, who's been working on designing this project. Um, she might be able to answer your questions more specifically. I uh, represent the land acquisition department from the regional park district. So I would be seeing through ne the negotiation of the easement rights. These are more design questions. I'm not sure that I am prepared to answer them. As you can see, I'm <laughs> fumbling through your questions here, but I would, um, I'd love to see if I can get Suzanne to join the next meeting and maybe she can answer these questions more accurately. Uh, if I can interrupt for just a second, Don. Yes, Samantha, you raised your hand. Yes, so Sarah, this is Samantha. Hey. Have you already been in conversation with the county, which is the landowner on the recreation side? And I believe it's the city of Pinole that's just north of that. Have you already begun any conversations or negotiations on land acquisition for the Bay Trail with those property owners? I think we've had preliminary conversations. I don't think anything has gone beyond that to my to my knowledge. Okay. I'd, I'd like to keep the focus on the CDU side, if, if we may. Um, in terms, you know, my notes are a little scattered at the moment. In terms of acreage for the CDU side, Melissa, do you have the little acreage for that? I'm side? sorry, are we moving away from the Bay Trail? I no, still dealing with the Bay Trail. Okay. I want to know the total okay, acreage sure. for the site before we start. In other words, Let's what see. what what part of the site are would be given up to the Bay Trail? And to know that, I have to know what the acreage of the site is. So we have seven point seven acres on the site. Um, and my calculation, you know, this goes back to earlier careers I had, but um, I was just working on a square footage basis of nine tenths of a mile. Nine tenths of a mile, it, that seems like a lot longer distance than just, <clears throat> just the CV. It site. is. Okay, well, my, my calculation of the acreage for the Bay Trail is based on the 0.9 mile length. Do you know the length of the word that we're actually talking about? So my calculation of what we're giving up is in, in more in keeping with the, the site. I'm sorry, can you rephrase the question or repeat the question? All right. let, let me try it again. Along, along the um, Union Pacific right away, mm -hmm. what is what is the length? Does any, anyone here have the length of the two parcels from um, just west of Garrity Creek to um, the end of the CVU site, which is just a little bit north of uh, Southwood Drive. I can get that for you in a couple of seconds here. I'm on Google or I can get the. <laughs> Thanks, can... Don. I was actually pulling up an APN map, but you might be able to do it better that way, huh? <laughs> well, we trust Google. You take the length the... times the width, right? And yeah, that's all, I, that's all I'm doing. For the length on the Pacific Railroad side, do you want the whole length or just, just the buildable space? No, I want the linear, the linear length of the border of the parcels, the two parcels that make up the CU site from uh, the Montero Bay Community Center, where that is, toward, and then uh, eastward uh, to where the residential parcel begins on Southwood Drive. And that's that's the border of the site at CU. I'm, I'm looking at 712 yeah. feet. Is that, are you looking at the railroad site? This from, yeah. Yeah, from here to here. So you got 1,166 
Or that's the that's linear? That's just the length. That's okay. just length. That's fine. I'm sorry, dude. You, cut, you got 1,100 feet? Um, from from, the, from the, the edge of the park to the the northern? No, I I calculated, you said all the way to the Montara Bay Community Center, right? Including that parcel or not including that parcel? No, no, no. Okay. So from, from here. Okay, the edge of the property, not from Montara Bay Community Center. Correct. Okay, we can do that again. Edge of the parcel. Yes. Again, I've got 712 feet. Well, according that's, to that sounds a lot better. Google Earth. So I can see from the APN map that the northerly parcel is 500 and 535 feet, linear feet. Yeah, so that's a much uh, modest number here because that uh, calculates at a 40 foot width, that calculates to 28,480 square feet. Jim, which is that, that spur is 127 feet, and that was, and the, but the spur was um, 20 feet wide, not 40 feet. Is that correct? Right. And again, these are just you know, this is proposed. So that's that's 2,540 square feet. So if we combine square those two. We get um, 31,020 square feet. You know, if we want to know what part of the what part of an acre that is, so we're talking about uh, seven tenths of an acre. So, so the so the remaining parcel would be about seven acres. If we give up seven tenths of an acre to the easement for the park district, what remains is approximately seven acres because it's seven point seven. Um, acres, seven point, yeah, seven point nine one acres total is what's shown on on this handout. But we have just a skosh over seven acres remaining to be developed with housing. So I was just curious. That's uh, length times width. Length times width. Can yeah. we go over the math one, one more time? So divided I can... by one acre. One acre is forty three thousand five hundred and sixty square feet. It's right. a number that was scarred. Into my brain at some point in my life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As long as it's uh, length times width, not plus width, uh, width. No. Can we review that one more time for now, uh, please? Okay. So, um, first we got the length of the railroad side. Right. And that gone broaded with 712. Well, actually, I, it, it depends on where I start, I, 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 I had to redo it and I got 783 feet. Okay, seven, it's, it's, it's ball, pretty ballpark. Uh, yeah, yeah. And 127 feet for the spur. 783 linear feet yes. for uh, the border times 40. Right, so let's just review that for a second. So 783 times 40. So that's 31,320 square feet. The, um, and the other part uh, was 127. 127 times 20, which is 2540. So adding those two, I should use the memory point of one of my calculator, but is 33,860 square feet. And dividing by 43,560 square feet per acre, I get 0.777, we call it 0.78 acres. Without a view. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. so I... <laughs> I apologize. I'm just now coming across the figures that I was provided by my predecessor after all of your math. Uh, it looks like 740 feet would be the portion that runs parallel to the UPRR tracks. And okay. the little, um, neighborhood access point would be 155 linear feet. Cool. Okay, can I have the numbers one more time? 740? 740. 
And for the Bay Trail segment, and then the neighborhood access point would be 155 linear feet. John, you have a question? Uh, not a question. I, I just I pulled up the document that Suzanne Wilson sent me, which is just a one page document. You give me two seconds. I'm going to forward it to those of you that. Oh, damn, I don't have that. Hang on. Uh, uh, but it, it's it's just a, a, an overview of the direction of the Bay Trail there, and it does not show that spur. It shows them going through the backyards of the people to the north, and it does show them going through the outfield of the mall field in the park next door. So what what was just described to us with the pic, the the image on on our shared screen is not the same as what was sent to me a couple of weeks ago by Suzanne Wilson. Hmm, okay. I mean, it's, it's just yeah, I, the image that I showed from our website. I don't know that it necessarily depicts the trajectory of the trail. It's just showing the gap that needs to be closed that that staff is working on closing. As I said, I believe that they are working with a consultant right now to determine the best trajectory, and um, that study should be released, I believe, before the end of this year. Okay. Well. Regardless of what figures we have, it runs between, you know, the last figures you supplied gives uh, three quarters of an acre, 0.75 acres is what you're asking from the school district. Um, and I, I think what my observation earlier that there's still seven acres remains after, should that easement be granted. And I, I must say as a cyclist, I'd like to see that easement granted. But um, it's just a personal note. Jim. But um, Don, you have a point? No, Sam had her hand Thank you. Sarah, have you already made this? Uh, I know you're you say you're still in the consulting phase, but have you already presented this before the board, the school board? Because technically, this can go through the school board without our committee having had any say in this, correct? The board can move forward with any actions regarding the use of this facility without having us go through this process, right? I don't. I, I think I, the, the, the board could. The board could grant an easement. Yeah. Yeah. So we are going to make recommendations, but whether or not this happens, it ultimately is up to the board, and whether it's approved during our committee discussions or before or after. I mean, all we can really do is well, present the re the information and our um, suggestions, right, based on the information given. So, thanks for yeah. that clarification. I was under the impression that your committee had to declare the property surplus before any any uh, negotiations could move forward. So that's that's new information to me, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> um, our our function is advisory. Mm-hmm. And the board disposes. Uh, with respect to the site, the site is an unbuildable site for a school. So it will never be, there will never be another school on the site. So the site itself, by due to its unbuildable nature uh, as a school, is surplus. There's there's little argument there. So the question for us to decide is what uses do we recommend that are compatible with the surrounding community? Don, you have a question. I had a comment. I mean, I had a discussion with Trustee Christian just about a week ago, and he made it crystal clear. The board does not have to wait for this committee to do anything at all. They can take action at any time to declare the surplus, not surplus, to, to develop it any way they want, to give away or sell that we're just here for show. It did not, it did not I, sit well with me. I, I I don't think that's accurate because I don't think the state would have created the 7-Eleven Committee by statute or show. Yeah, I, yeah. Art? You, you are correct. And uh, two other trustees that I spoke to said that he is in, uh, inaccurate. Okay. So by he, I mean, I, oh, 
trustee Christian, not me. Correct. Well, and if I could just share, um, this committee was approved. This the composition of this committee was approved by the board, and so I don't want to speculate on those conversations. But the the board has approved this committee. They're aware of the work we have. Um, board president and a trustee with us here tonight um, via Zoom, um, and this will be available on YouTube. So, um, my reading of the statute is that with respect to housing or staff, the board need not go through the 711 committee, otherwise, the board needs to employ a 711 committee. To dispose of surplus property. That's my reading of the of the plain English of the statute, um, which I'm happy to pull out. Right? Uh, point of order, but I don't want to get off on to a tangent. Uh, but uh, the trustees that I spoke to uh, were not even uh, sure where the money for these surplus properties would would go. That's and uh, we're not even really the right. So. Um, we're off topic. Yes, so, and I didn't you know. Um, but it needs to be addressed sooner than later. Well, I, I, I think we'll have to put that on an agenda as an agenda item for a future meeting as to where, where the proceeds from the sale of the properties um, ends up. There are several statutes that apply to it, and California is a codified state. Everything is by statute. For, and so I also just we, want to be careful. We keep conflating surplus with sale, and it's not the same exactly. thing, right? Surplus does not mean sale. Yeah, if I can just briefly, and I, I won't dive sure. too quickly into statute, we might be a little bit off the agendized topic. But the 711 committee is required before the district sells a previous property or enters into a long term lease for property. Does the district, the board itself, without having to go through the 711 committee, do other things with the property? Sure, joint use agreement, grant an easement through the park, other things they can do, but we cannot sell the property or enter into a long-term lease. There is a recent exception for workforce housing, which yes. allows us to avoid surplus property. But, um, so this committee is here to look at these four sites and to come up with recommendations because one of the options on the table for these four sites is potentially selling or potentially a long-term leasing or all the other options available to it. So if this is required for these sites before the district could find any of them surplus, and you're right, not necessarily selling them, but doing whatever they else want to do with it. Don, through the chair to clarify from the attorney, when you talk about the district issuing an easement to East Bay Regional Parks, are we talking about giving them the property, loaning the pro property, selling them the property? I use the word easement on purpose. Yes. That that is not selling. That is still owning you grant an easement. You still have ownership, but easement is a use of a particular piece of property. And we're allowed to do that with other public entities. And it's not necessary, but in this scenario, when we're talking about East Bay Park and that strip of land, we might want to maintain ownership, but grant them an easement for that walkway. And they, it, again, it's subject to lots of negotiation and the board of take action. There'd be a hearing, there'd be two meetings, it'd be a, a longer process. Why would we want to issue an easement for for a forever loan as opposed to selling them property since they've got money to, to purchase the property and then we would have cash in hand? Why would I, I didn't say we'd want to? I told you no, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm asking yeah. your opinion. Yeah, I, I won't render an opinion, okay, on it, but I, I will tell you both of those would be options. So that's yeah. so, um, our easements. Permanent. Um, they're not intended to be permanent. Exactly. Can they be long term? Yeah. And I think Don used that term. Maybe use long term or. I said forever. I said forever. <laughs> so easements can have, just like leases, can have a time limit. They can have certain restrictions about how long they can be inactive or inactive, how they get renewed, if at all, right? These are all things that can be negotiated. Think of it, yes, agreed. And think of an easement on a piece of property like uh, PGE. Or the sewer or water. They have, I, I won't use forever like Don used, but uh, a very long term easements on property because those are uses of the property. Could a trail like this for the park be an easement? Sure, it could. Could they sell that strip? Well, they find it surplus and then it could be sold. 
Okay. Options, many options. So if I could just add to this conversation, um, in our minds, just from a land acquisition perspective, easements are considered permanent. However, that doesn't mean that they can't be unwound. You can quick claim an easement to remove it from title. Um, there are various types of rights that could be granted in a scenario like this, from fee title down to a license agreement. If you were looking for something that wasn't intended to be long-term, I would think you would want to look at something like a lease agreement or a license agreement. In this case, where the park district will be probably spending millions of dollars to build a trail, I don't know that we would be interested in something less than an easement. But anyway, I just wanted to clarify that uh, from our perspective, easements are permanent. You know, that's not to say that they can't be extinguished, but they are intended to be a permanent right. Um, if I could ask a couple questions. So I know you you said that you, you're in the early stages of design. Um, and does that mean there is no legal description for the area that, that you're potentially seeking? Uh, Correct. There is no legal description at this time. Okay. And then do you typically also do an in-house uh, fair market valuation of the interest that you're looking to acquire? Like in this case, if you're seeking a, a permanent long-term easement, uh, do you do that legwork in-house? And is that something the district could have access to? So we actually don't typically do um, what, what would be called like a desktop appraisal. Um, not to say that we couldn't we couldn't come up with a figure. Typically we would, pardon me, this is my cat. <laughs> um, typically we would hire that work out. I don't know that it's necessarily necessary for this particular um, project. The committee and the board may decide to grant an easement. If they decide to sell, then yes, at some point, one or both parties will need to appraise uh, the fair market value of that easement. So it really just depends. I hope that answers the question. Um, I, I Again, these are all things that now that we have legal counsel, hopefully we can have a response. Are there any Naylor Act considerations on this site given proximity to the recreational facility next door? And if so, how would that influence the easements that East Bay Regional Parks would request? I don't know who that question is for, but... I think we finally have the capacity to answer some of these questions we've, we've had for a while. Well, uh, if I could jump in, I think the easement discussion would happen on a separate track if that was something that the district uh, was requested to consider, right? So that's not necessarily tied into the overall surplusing of the site and whether or not the Naylor Act applies. Um, just based on what we're discussing here, that could happen on a separate track. And, and then, of course, some of the questions I was asking about fair market valuation and legal descriptions, those are all things that just at the beginning of a discussion, because as you can imagine, as legal counsel to school districts, we're often assessing requests for easements, not just from other public agencies, but also from public utilities. We always start the discussion with what type of due diligence has the entity done? Is there anything they can share with us? Have they valued the area that they're seeking an easement or seeking to acquire an easement in? Uh, what are the potential uses? What do they need it for? Because we have to provide all that support when we bring uh, a recommendation to the board. Uh, but in terms of the Naylor Act and whether or not it applies to the site that we've been discussing, uh, from the, there are three requirements um, and, and conditions that have to be met in order for the Naylor Act to apply. So I'll go through those for a second. Just give me one second. Let me pull up my information here. So typically what we'd look at is number one, it, the whole or a portion of the school consists of land used for recreational purposes. Number two, the property was used for recreational purposes for at least eight years immediately preceding the board's determination to sell or lease. And number three, there are no other available publicly owned properties in the vicinity of the school site that can meet the existing and foreseeable recreational needs of the community. For this particular site, my understanding is that it's been closed for a while, right? So the Seaview site was closed let me just go, I have two dates, one 2005 and 2009. And um, 
please correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is it has not been used for recreational purposes consistently over the last eight years. So from our perspective, it, it, when applying those conditions, it doesn't meet uh, the second condition. Um, and then you wouldn't even get to the third condition, which is, you know, if there are other publicly owned properties in the vicinity that could provide the recreational needs of the community. Um, but that would be the analysis for that site. And then, of course, each site is unique and different, and you'd have to look at those conditions and apply it to uh, the site and its and its prior uses. Okay. Um, I think we've gone about as far as we can with respect to the CDU site. Um, so we're talking, <clears throat> talking about three quarters of an acre of land involving all both the uh, border along the railroad tracks and the east and the uh, spur that would connect with the residential area. Um, and with respect to uh, and then the density has been increased and then so we have to get a um, investigate just a little bit further, make sure that uh, the CCNR is overruled by whatever the county has done. And um, so we'll have to follow up with the links that are in the um, message from Ms. Toms. With any other comments about CDU? Oh, yeah, I was just uh, curious if it, would, if it would be prudent for us to uh, find a value for that particular piece of property. Well, we had a range of uh, values before for Terra Realty. Um, but for the seven tenths of a third of an acre. And so, yeah. I will note briefly on those, so while you're looking for the values, assuming that the information from Ms. Toms is accurate, the values were based on the density that oh, before they were changed true. in January. So she's saying this all changed January 1st with the new housing element. So those values, at least for these two sites, would probably lead us to real people look at those again and reevaluate. Yeah. So he had shared that he was looking at just the 4.6 acre site, um, the site that is located here on this side of Garrity Creek. Um, comps in the area indicate a range of value of 12 to 15 per square foot or 2.4 million to 3 million. And again, as Mr. Henderson shared, I think we would want him to look at this information and come back to the committee with the update. Okay. Um, please make a note that we want to put that on the agenda for next time. I'm computer screen for that. So, so I property value. The agenda is the property value, the revenues, property values for both atoms and um, CPU, given the county's revision of the general plan, the adoptive housing elements, and the agenda item rezoning both parcels. Okay. I'd like to move on to um, where we left off at our last meeting, which was not settled, and that's Harmon Knowles. So with respect to Harmon Knowles. Actually, could I, before you move on, could I just ask a question? Go ahead, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I understood that my colleagues had made a presentation to this committee perhaps last year. I just want to ask, put the question to the committee, would you like for Suzanne Wilson or someone else from our trails development staff to come and make a presentation about where they're at in terms of um, the extent of design and what they're thinking? Would that be helpful to the committee or is that sort of putting the horse before the cart, um, you know, Any thoughts? 
I thought it'd be, I think it'd be useful, especially since we've got new members that weren't here to see the first time around. And the committee has been reconstituted since uh, last year. So we've had three new members added to the committee. And it would be useful uh, for their for those members and also for those of us that are advanced in age. <laughs> Speak for yourself. And refresh our recollection of uh, the presentation that was made. Okay, great. I will um, see if she's available to attend the next meeting. Um, and if not, yeah, I'll, I'll see what I can do to to get a presentation on the next um, meeting. Okay, Which, that was May 21st. May 21st, yeah, okay. I'll communicate with Lewis, and I think I have some other contacts with the school district and also Terra Realty if I'm unable to make that happen. Okay. Okay, thanks. Very good. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. All right. I do have a question. Uh, do we need to go to Adams and address the uh, the letter we got from Joya before we move on to Harmon Knowles or? I should say Supervisor John Joy, I'm sorry. No, I, I, I understand the question. Okay. Um, may, I, may I ask a question about this? Um, I, I don't have an answer for you just yet. Let me see what the on the between. No, I'm just wondering what, um, how many of these emails are going to read on record? Um, um, or how the process of selecting which letters are going to be read on record? So, uh, yes, I can interrupt that. Sure. Um, you would not actually put the letters into the minutes. They would go attached to the minutes, so you don't have to worry about trying to. No, no, no. I, I understand that. What I'm saying is um, there was a request to read a particular email that was that's in the media packet. Mm -hmm. So we have several emails. How many are we able to read aloud if, if you know, likely requested? And how are they selected? It would just require our motion. I, I had to make the decision. Okay. I have um, five communications, and they deal with. Um, let's see. Hilltop, 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 Seaview, and. Um, so I, I think I have four for the Hilltop Harmon Knowles area and one for which we just dealt with, which was the uh, East Bay Regional Park District. So if we're on to Harmon Knowles, um, I'll ask, see if there's any public comment first, and then we can uh, discuss things thereafter. So uh, for Harmon Knowles. For Harmon Knowles. So do we have any hands raised with respect to Harmon Knowles? Not at this time. Um, all right, so let me try to put these in chronological order. Starting out with April 5. And um, Okay, where, where, where are you getting these documents? Is these ones that Ardo handed you? The, well, uh, this is from Art. It's one, two, three. They're all from Art. So there, there, there are duplicates of uh, three that's in the packet that I gave you. Yes, packet. So it's fine. Yeah, that's not what I see in the. Um, April 5. No, there's one from Signature uh, that I forgot to put in. If I may, Chair? Go ahead. There's uh should be one from, uh, uh, let's see, from uh, the Fairmead Hilltop Neighborhood Council, then uh, uh, County Supervisor John Doya. Uh, one from uh, Richmond Mayor Eduardo Martinez, uh, one from uh, City Planner Lina Velasco, so I and, have... and then from City Council Member Cesar Cepeda. So I have uh, Mr. Cepeda's um, 
They're in, they're in the packet that I submitted today. Okay. I have, I have two copies of the same from, um, was this a co error? Uh, two copies from the mayor. And from the of the hospital, Cesar Sophia, which I think I had before. And one from Bobby Kari. Yeah, Bobby Kari is the uh, neighborhood council president for that area. Okay. Is there a chance to give you this? It might be better if you want two copies from the mayor. It's got the city letterhead on it. Uh, it should be the third one. I'm, I'm looking right at it. That's not from the mayor. Oh, it's so the third one in the, in the sheets here. Mm -hmm. The second was uh, city or county supervisor John Dwyer. Is that what you're looking for? There. Okay. Right there. Okay. Um, right out loud during the meeting. Well, me, since you're familiar with the contents of these communications, which would you like to have read? Or which would you like to move to have read? To the committee. Well, if they're uh, submitted into the packet, that would be fine as well, rather than uh, reading them all. Okay. Um, How are the people yeah. that are on Zoom supposed to have any idea? If you're just going to put include them in the packet, how are they going to know what the content is? Well, they'll be in the uh, next agenda, correct? But they'll, be in, be, they'll be in the uh, minutes attached to the agenda for the next meeting. But how can they comment tonight as we're discussing them? If they, if they have, really have a chance a to see them. Then to read any of these. Yeah, that's, which one. that's what I was asking. Yes. Or, um, but let me put it to the committee in general. Is there a motion to read any or all of the communications for, for relating to the Harmon Knowles site tonight? Now. I want to make a motion to read all and to tonight. Is there a second? Sure, I'll second it if we take turns reading. Okay. Um, if there are no objections, so moved. Um, Actually, no. I, I object. Aye. Okay. There are objections. So, we need to wait. Whoops. So, if we can go into discussion, um, Guadalupe made the motion, so she's going to get to speak to us first before anybody else does. Okay. Guadalupe? Well, I would just, like I said, I think Don made a good point uh, when he said, I think that we need to read them into existence right now so that the viewers know what we're talking about. I think before we have conversation over the emails, because I think it's going to be get, it's going to be brought up. So I think that we're going to just be talking around and nobody's going to understand what we're talking about. So if we read them into existence, then we will all be on the same page. Okay. Any other comments? I have just have to wonder with most of these people here, uh, Mayor Martinez, Council Member uh, Zapata, uh, and a, the, the chair of the neighborhood council, uh, uh, Cotri. I'm just wondering, and, and even uh, Lena Velasco, if their positions would be identical if they had more data, especially about the possibility of the district ever having money to build a school. They have to. I, mean, I would think that they would, would want to to have all the information before putting their their names on a on a, on a letter. Okay. And I don't think they I don't think they've gotten that information. I have a more logistical objection. I think it's too many to read. I think we should pick one that kind of reflects what all the opinions are, um, because I think they all share very similar sentiments. So if we could read one aloud. Like it's a representative of all four or five, because they're again, they're all kind of leaning in the same direction. So my my point wasn't because I didn't want to hear them. My point is there's a lot of them, and um, 
I would rather spend our time in discussion than, than reading or reading out loud. So that's why I asked what the procedure was going to be, but it seems like we, I, I object not that I don't want to hear the letters. I think we should listen to one that's representative of all of them and move on to discussion. So that is, are you making a motion with that? Can hand? I? You absolutely can. I so make a motion. Hold on one second. Oh, okay. Because there's a exactly right way to, to do this. Uh, your motion, you'd say, I move to strike the word all mm -hmm. and insert one. And if you could give us the date of the one that you would mm -hmm. like read. So if you could look at the one. The... Sure. I actually, I make, I move to pick one in the packet that Arto feels best represents the sentiment of all letters since you provided the packet. Anyone second it? I'll second it. Okay. If there are no objections, no, we're not even there yet. Not you there. have to you have to repeat that motion. And the motion the motion is, is and it's just an amendment. To amend um, the vote the motion by um, member Emilana to uh, read one letter representative of all communications received in support of preserving the Harmon Knoll site. The point of order? Point of order. That was uh, that was uh, Trustee uh, Torrey. Not... I know. Yeah. That's her amendment. Yes, but you said he's on the honor. Yeah. She's amending poems. Oh, Lupe's Luke, original motion. Excuse yeah. me. Uh, so the motion is to read one letter representative of all the letters um, by town meeting member Tory. Amending the motion by committee member and Lana to read all the letters. To read just one no, letter. You know, we're, we're, we only, that's rewording the first motion. We're only talking about the amendment. That's so that was that was not the motion. We the motion is just the um, to read one letter representative of all the um, out of the package. Oh, no, read one letter um, out of the packet. It wasn't even representative. Out of the packet <laughs> chosen. By R2. That was the amendment. Correct? That's correct. Okay, so that is all, and it was seconded, and that is all we're voting on right now or discussing. And because you made the amendment, she would get to speak first to it. Samantha? I like the way it sounds. I think we should move forward with it. Any other comments? Are you going to invite public comment? Are there any hands raised? Not at this time. Okay. Roll call. If there are no objections, the amendment is adopted. I just we'll go to roll call. Can I go to roll call, please? So let me put uh, down the list one more time. Um, committee member in Lana? On the amendment? On the amendment. Yeah. Uh, committee member uh, Luis Gray is not here. And committee member Rantula? Yes. Committee member Gosney? No. no. Uh, committee member Sinclair? Yes. Committee member Torres? Yes. And chair of no, no, you chair to so the motion to the amendment passes. So now we're on to the motion originally made to read um, as amended to read one letter representative of all the communication. I'm just trying to get ahead of the you're, at, yeah, because you're adding to the, the actual motion. Um, you're your rewording your motion. With the, with the Red ink chosen by Arto. That was the, 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 the we're going to read 
one letter chosen by a day. Okay. The motion is to read one letter chosen by Ardo. And the statement. Yes, there are no objections. I still object. Back to where we're trying to. Committee member and Lana. This is on the motion, the amended motion now to read one letter. Yeah. Uh, Committee member Ventua. Yes. Committee member Stosny. No. Committee member Sigler. Yes. Committee member Torres. Yes. Motion passes. Please read the representative. May I ask the chair to read the uh, first letter in the packet? This one? Yes. yes. Okay, this is addressed to um, Mr. Renthua, and it, it's from you. It is. Hello, WCC USB 711 Committee. I'm writing on behalf of the Fairmead Hilltop Neighborhood Council. We are asking the 711 Committee to stop or reconsider the sale or trade at the Harmon Knowles Elementary School site. We believe that the property should be saved for a future public school site or for or this future school site of Highland Elementary as originally planned many years ago. We feel that if the property is not used for the future site of Highland Elementary, then it would be prudent for WCC USD to save the property for a public school site for the future development at Hilltop Mall. The plans for the Hilltop Mall development will be presented by the City Planning Department hearing this month on May 18th. There will be two additional presentations. One will be a major event hosted by the Fairmead Hilltop Neighborhood Council. We will be inviting the entire city of Richmond and surrounding areas to the Hilltop Community Church, located at 3118 Shane Drive, which will be held on May 23rd, Thursday evening at 7 p.m. This event will be streamed to social media and the Fairmead Hilltop Neighborhood Council will host Near Richmond City Planner Lena Velasco as signature development group for which is the new owners of Hilltop Mall. The other meeting will be which will be held shortly after by the Hilltop District Neighborhood Council, which is also scheduled to be an announcement of the project before it goes to the Richmond City Council at the end of May 2024. We'd like to add that there are no other properties near the Hilltop Mall development within biking distance that could be bought or used to build a school. Our County Supervisor, John Joya, Richmond Mayor Eduardo Martinez, Richmond City Planning Director, Lena Rolasco, District 2 City Council Member, Cesar Cepeda, Hilltop Mall Area City Council Person, Signature Development Group, the developers of Hilltop Mall, Neighborhood Councils have all written letters to encourage WCC, USD, and the 711 Committee to strongly reconsider the sale of this particular school property and save it for a future school site, keeping in mind that this is the development in Hilltop Mall, that this development in Hilltop Mall will bring 850 to 1,500 new homes to the area. Why would the WCC USD risk thinking that they would be able to buy a property in the future for millions of dollars when you already have a property? If you save it, warmest regards, Arto Ritiwa, Fairmead Hilltop Neighborhood Council, and phone number given. Thank you. Thank you. Any other items to bring up with respect to farming moles? Can we change the image to reflect the new site? And uh, I'm just an item of curiosity. Have we received any communication from the Richmond uh, city government with respect to the recreational portion of the person? Not to my knowledge. 
And has there been any discovery of um, an expired MOU or other agreement between the district and the Richmond City Government the Recreation Department? No, not to my knowledge. Okay. Any other questions with respect to Herman Mills? Not a, not a question, but comment. And I know I'm spitting into the wind here. Mm -hmm. I need to go on the record once more and point out that the likelihood of a school being built there in the next 15 to 17 years is extremely, extremely minimal, largely because the district bond program does not have the, the requisite funds for it. If they were to build a school there right now, I'm, I would speculate we're talking 90 to $100 million. We're talking about 10 years from now. I can easily see 125 to 135 million dollars for a new elementary school uh, there. The district does not have any of that money now. Uh, they would have to pass a new bond measure for that to happen. The political nature of things in this district that the voters do not trust the school district when it comes to bond money. They do not trust the school board. Doesn't matter who's on the board. They just don't trust them on there. So there's very very little faith in them. Uh, the bond measure would re require that they be very specific about where the money would be going. If we just, and if we just say Harmon Knowles, for instance, why would the people of Hercules, Panol, El Cerrito, any of the eight unincorporated areas, and even a large part of Richmond, vote to tax themselves for another 30 to 40 years, knowing that absolutely not a single penny of it would go for their communities? The likelihood of passing a bond measure, which requires 55%, I believe would be very, very difficult. Also, the district has to pay back a substantial part of the money that they've already uh, borrowed before they can uh, pass another bond measure. We're talking many hundreds of millions of dollars paying back. That, again, would take 15, 18 years, perhaps. So it doesn't matter that they need the schools. I'm not denying that they need a school there. The bottom line is they have no money and it's likelihood that they will not have any money. Whereas if the district, the school board does something else with the property, they might bring revenue into the district that is needed now. Might bring revenue in that they can put to use now. Uh, it's kind of a bird in the hand as opposed to a, a wish list. I, I understand your point um, and it's part of the record, but I don't think it's gonna be settled here. No, I don't disagree with Don, but also uh, having the property available uh, in the future is also a burden to hand. Uh, and there are other ways of uh, uh, paying for a school uh, than just a bond measure. And so um, I, I would call for a vote at this time, I imagine. I, I, I would once, once again remind that surplus could be a long term lease, which could generate revenue, which could allow a school to be built. And so I think it goes back. I think there's a fear that surplus means this property will be sold or never be able to be used again. And that's not what it means. Yeah, it does to the trustees. I, I don't know if that's true or not, right? Um, okay. With um, with respect to Harmon Mills, um, I, I think I think we we put all the issues out there, both the money issue and the future use issue and the development issue. So I'd like to move on to the next parcel. We're not going to we're not going to resolve the money issue, um, but we can make a recommendation with respect to reserving it and see what the board does with the parcel. Don. I, I know the money issue is, is... I'm sorry, if you don't want me to talk, just say... No, no don't call I, I know the money issue is critical, but make, make, your, make your contribution, please. All right. My suggestion is that when we report to the board, we spell out both options so that the board make, is, can make an informed decision, not a one-sided decision. No, I, I, I intend, if I have anything to do with it, I intend to make all those points in the report, not to omit anything. Question, Samantha? so can you explain what you mean by both sides when we actually have to recommend surplus yes or no? What do you mean both sides? Well, potentially reuse for the site. 
and whether it's declared surplus or not. Uh, so we make a recommendation, yes or no. Right? Well, the, this committee can, well, the, not, you, you can make recommendations about what the potential reuses could be. So because the board makes the decision whether to declare it surplus and what to do with it at a future site or future time, I'm sorry. Uh, but I don't want, I would prefer that this, this committee does not just take a singular position and saying this committee has agreed to do this uh, or, uh, with this site, because that's not true. I, I, I'm not gonna change my mind. Arnold's not gonna change his mind. Uh, and I don't wanna have to give a, a personal report to the board contradicting what this board uh, or the committee has done. Um, with, I, I think there's a point that um, this is a singular page that should be repeated. Surplus does not mean uh, sale. They're not the, they're not the same term. That if we can recognize it as a surplus site, and we can say that it's the remaining buildable site that the district control. And you know with that. The surrounding community, we are we are by statute required to take into account what the surrounding the wishes of the surrounding community is or are. And if if I if we can take the the communications we receive as evidence of what the sentiments are in the surrounding community, surrounding community would like to see a school there at some point in the future. If we sell the property. If, if we recommend selling the property, then whatever takes over that surface mm -hmm. is going to be quite permanent and unlikely to ever become a school. So it doesn't mean, you know, the fact that there's no money, no bond money at the moment, the surplus does not mean that we have to eliminate the possibility that there will ever be a school there. But it is the one buildable site remaining in the district. And the population of, of the schools can always be changed by redistricting the service areas of the schools. So, you know, at any rate, this is. I would like a little bit more clarification, though. I think it comes down to what the role of our committee and my understanding was we were going to vote on whether or not we were going to make a recommendation, yes or no, to surplus the property. Surplus does not mean sell. I, I, I know, I'm not arguing with that. Okay. But the idea that we have to give a balanced um, opinion, well, we may be able to give a balanced opinion, but we do have to make a recommendation, correct? So we do have to vote yes or no at some point. I'm not saying it has to be now. Right. But even if we offer various opinions and whatever, we have to make a recommendation. Um, and I, think you, I, I keep hearing you echo surplus doesn't mean sell, but it also doesn't mean don't sell. And I think at the end of the day, our recommendation on the 7-11 committee is only going to be whether we surplus the sites and which sites we decide to surplus and whether we don't. And I think whatever happens after, because we're going to be recommending you know, different options, like you said, but at the end of the day, the the vote as a decision making body is gonna be the board. And we have no control over there over that. So that means whatever site that we're getting ready to surplus means we're handing it over to the board and letting them go off of whatever their beliefs are with not even, you know, they choose not to take our recommendations in, you know, they're still at free will to do whatever they want, in which that means they might sell. Because um, we have no control over that. Right. So that just means that, you know, all we're doing here is recommending which ones we think should be surplus, if all, or if none. And that's, you know, what we're deciding on, right? Not what they're going to do with it, because at the end of the day, we have no say or no vote on what direction they wish to move. Art, and then I'd like to review yeah, the statute. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree with Lupe, and I also want to uh, uh, reiterate that uh, once it's gone, it's gone. The property's done, and uh, there there will be no school for the people moving into Hilltop in the surrounding areas. And we do have to take into consideration uh, the community's voice. Uh, and once it's leased, even if it's uh, put out the lease, 
or uh, the district is going to sell it. That's what they that's what they intend to do on all of these properties. I'm I'm super uncomfortable with statements of what the district is going to do. I should say that um, uh, the trustees I've spoke to. I, I once again, I, I think there's a big issue of speculating about what someone else is going to do versus making the best recommendation for this body. Um, I mean, I think there are options and we can give our recommendation of what we think should be done with the land, but it feels a little bit fear mongering to say this is what this person down the road is going to do, no matter what information they're presented with. Okay. Um, I, I it I makes me uncomfortable. I understand. I apologize for making you uncomfortable. Um, I think it's it's appropriate to review what by statute the duties of the committee are, because I've I've heard um, my impression is that uh, members of the committee have a, a singular idea, and it's not exactly what the statute says. The committee shall do all of the following. Review the projected school enrollment and other data as provided by the district to determine the amount of surplus space and real property. That's paragraph A. Paragraph B, establish a priority list of use of surplus space and real property that will be acceptable to the community. Put a pin in that part. Paragraph C, I'll ask to have circulated throughout the attendance area a priority list of surplus space and real property and provide for hearings of community input to the committee on acceptable uses, plural, of my word, of space and real property, including the sale or lease of surplus real property for child care development purposes pursuant to section 17458. D, make a final determination of limits of tolerance of use of space and real property, and E, forward to the district governing board a report recommending uses of surplus space and real property. It's, it's, we're not limited with respect to uses. We don't have to, to settle on a single thing. We can establish a list of priorities. Awesome. Uh, for the good of, of the committee, I just wanted to uplift the definition for surplus land. Um, it is included in the packet. It's on page 25, and I just thought that that might help provide some clarity to the um, discussion about the definition of surplus land. And I can read it if you would like me to. I just sure. I just wanted to uplift this to the group. Um, I love definitions. It helps me. There's a lot of words that we use that we evoke meaning to, and I like to go and see what definition I should be using in my work. And so surplus land means land owned in fee simple by any local agency for which the local agency's government body takes formal action in a regular public meeting declaring that the land is surplus and not necessary for the agency's use. And so the statute reference is there, and I, I just wanted to uplift that to the group tonight. Thank you. All right. Shall we? Yeah, I think we have to. Yeah. Right. I would like to move on to uh, the next site, which is portal. Um, we have about 20 minutes remaining. Um, so the bring up the So the part that we're talking about is on this on the uh, slope of the land bordered by Mosher, Portola, and Navalier, and it's unbuildable. Um, and subject to landslide. So we can't, so that is again by definition surplus, and it will never have another school on it. Oh, excuse me. Yes. You said unbuildable. Is it, you talk about unbuildable for anything or unbuildable for, for just a school? school. Okay. Just want to make sure that clarification. State, state architect will not approve any school to be built on that site. That's so, a given. So the site itself is surplus. 
by definition. The question is the uses or the site. So it was proposed by Terra Realty that the site um, be developed for housing. Um, and in my discussions with the city of El Cerrito about libraries, uh, they didn't seem to be interested. They were going to develop a library in, in contiguous with the um, BART station. So I don't think, at least my, my impression of talking with the planning department was that they weren't interested in, in a site for their, their live through library. Um, and I haven't received no other communications with respect to the site. So any public comment? Any hands raised? There are no hands raised at this time. Okay. Any board or committee comment? Um, that being the case, um, is there a motion to declare the site surplus? I would recommend that we, we ask the board to declare a surplus. Okay. Since we're advisory only. Uh, all right. Um, I move to make a recommendation to the school board to make the portal a site surplus. To declare the portal site surplus. I make a recommendation for the board to declare the portal a site surplus. Second. Don? First off, I will second that, but keep in mind that February 28th of last year, we already had this 7-11 committee passed the exact same motion. And this is like rewriting your will, Don. So I think his motion will supersede the last one since the board, since the committee has been reconstituted. Well, it has been reconstituted. All it's been is been augmented with new personnel, but the actions of the of the seven eleven committee in the past aren't null and void. Let me get a reading from the Parliament board, please. We are starting over. It's the same motion. We can continue with this motion. This is the motion of this board. So, so what would happen? Second, what, that sorry, what would what would happen if we went contrary to the, the the previous motion that we passed? This board's decision will be the valid one. You wouldn't have you wouldn't have to have a motion to to invalidate the previous motion. No, no sorry, it just doesn't work that way with laws. Uh, again, we have a motion. We have a second. Yes, there's a motion and a second. If there are no objections, the motion will be adopted as presented. I see none. The motion is, the motion is passed. Portola is declared surplus. No. Recommended. Recommended to the board. Be declared as surplus. Be declared surplus. Thank you. I'll be discussing uh, other uses, recommendation for uh, alternate uses. Um, are there any uses beyond housing that you would like to to discuss? No, I mean the board. Anyone? I'm just not familiar with any very um, strong uh, opinions on use, really aside from housing. So I'm not not really sure. I know that there are. There is a um, organization that uses the gardening, the garden area, but aside from that, I'm not sure the, what. The Master Garden Program from UC uh, I, I saw their sign when I visited the site. Um, I, I don't, you know, it's not a, a recreational program that's gone on for eight years or more. It's, it wouldn't have put the, wouldn't apply the NARA. Um, I'm so, um, we, we can put on the agenda for the next meeting to ask about um, the Master Garden Program. So what are we asking about it? I'm not clear. What their interests are. Have they expressed interest? 
Um, I don't know. I know uh, one person who's part of it. So they used to they used to be at the Adams site, and there was a community garden there that had been built. Mr. Chair, just to be clear for minutes. Um, you said it would be on the next agenda, or yeah, are I you going give to them, I would give them an opportunity to present on the next agenda. If they, if, I would let them know that we're discussing um, disposing, uh, putting the site up as surplus and seeing if there are, that it might be redeveloped into housing. And do they have any comments? They might. There might they might seek some accommodation. I don't know. What's below them is a county chartered school, and that's a site that was used by the district of uh, the portables there to house the various elementary schools that were going through reconstruction. It's still owned by the district. It's still owned by the district. Yeah. So it's. It's now occupied by the Invicta Academy of Richmond. According to one of the County Board of Education trustees, when they come up for a rechartering in two years, she is not optimistic that they will be successful. So the site be, may become available again. That's a different person. Arno's looking at me because he's saying we're speculating about other votes again. It's speaking on behalf of trustees. <laughs> well, I'm saying what the trustee told me. The county board. But yes, the ones that the, the ones that issued the charter. Right, that's the county board. Yes. Okay. Any other comments? No. Um, that property, I'm just refreshing my memory. They did say there were issues with sandy soil, correct? Or that um it's it's part of the Blake Mont slide area. So slide area, that's what yes. it is. Yeah. Okay. And there's a special assessment district for the residents of that area so they can support mitigating measures. Beyond that, since I'm not a resident there, I, I really don't have a comment. Um, depending upon the reuse options. In these, the sliding can be mitigated by driving pilings, except again, depending upon whether you're talking residential, you're talking commercial, it would depend upon how deep the pilings go and, and how many of them. But that would be factored into the devaluation of this of a sale price, for instance. Uh, I mean, if you got if it's, if it's worth nine million dollars and you got to spend four million dollars for pilings, they're only going to pay you five million for it. That, that, if it that just thrown out there for consideration. Uh, okay. I'd like to move on to uh, discussion on D2, which is a review of the draft report. And also, this is your writing. Good afternoon, everyone. Evening. Um, starting on page 14 of the packet, there is really what is intended to be just a draft outline of what the report from the committee to the board could look like. Um, it is the committee's report. And so staff only seeks to serve as a support to the committee. Um, this is a format um, that had been created um, under the previous committee. Um, there are sections of the report that have information um, as it relates to actions taken by the board. You can see there's a table of contents that has a couple of um, sections, um, the executive summary, the purpose of the 7-Eleven committee. A lot of the items in the draft report do reference section. 7-Eleven um, committee membership does provide a narrative of board's approvals through the different successions of the committee. Um, again, under some of the other sections, you see like responsibilities of the committee. It's going to speak back to some of the statute that was read aloud during tonight's meeting. Um, property descriptions are the ones that we were looking at earlier this evening as we were looking at the different properties. Again, this is just recommended in terms of a format and a template that could be used. Um, so on those property descriptions, um, there are 
there is a picture of the property and then below there is some legal descriptions of the property, um, some zoning sections and other things that we will be asking Terra Realty to take a look at in light of the additional comments that we've received to make sure that this represents the most up-to-date information. And then there are sections listed that could include committee's recommendations and priority use. Um, as you get to uh, towards the conclusion, of the, um, again, just meant to be an outline. There are some legal definitions here um, to help orient the reader of the report to under to also understand how some of these terms are specifically defined in statute and case law. Um, and then there are other sections. If there were additional considerations that were guiding the committee's work, um, there are some required next steps that were shared um, in the statute reading earlier tonight about the public hearings that would need to be held once there is a draft report by the committee, we would need to um, issue a um, advertisement in the paper for public hearings. The draft report would need to be available. The committee would hear those public hearings. And that would need to happen before the report would move forward to the board. And so there's a section here to speak to um, that what that process um, and how the committee decides to execute that process. Um, and then there is the um, availability at the end for appendices, additional documents and things that might wanna be included in the report. And so um, staff looks to the committee to understand um, the support you know, the administrative support that you may want from staff to support with this, but we really just offer it to the committee as um, an outline um, and a guide um, to consider um, when looking at the, the draft report that the committee would like to, um, you know, put together and move forward. Sure. Do you, I just wanted uh, a point of clarification under 7-Eleven committees, uh, the list is incomplete. If you look, look at the paragraph on the next page, you can actually list the other people. Those that served on the committee before, the 7-Eleven committee member, um, we yeah. missed uh, Guadalupe. Ms. Inyana, my, my sincerest apologies. It's just a clerical mistake. And on the, well, yeah, there's another one too. So on, um, I have three. Where's the committee memberships? I am actually area two, not area three. District two. Yeah, district two. I'm happy to make all of the requested revisions, including a title that I received. And I'm happy to receive any recommended comments and, and make those. I want to support in whatever capacity the committee would like. But thank you. And again, my sincerest apologies. I hate making those kinds of mistakes. <laughs> this is the part where I turn bright red at the end of the day. I'm so sorry. Um, so, do you, would you like a motion to uh, approve the format of this report? So, I've got a name of the say, yeah, I don't, I think this is just for your information. Just for your information. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we yeah. Yeah. We don't need to adopt this. Yeah. Anymore. Okay. So, thank you very much. But, uh, Clarifying question. So uh, this is just an outline of what the report may look like if we decided to take on this direction. Yes. Yeah. In some sections you may not want to include. Some you may want to include. Um, sometimes it's helpful when you're taking on, you know, something like this to kind of have an idea of what it might look like. It's missing a large portion of me, the last section, which is the findings and recommendations. <laughs> so, um, the pages that, were, that represent, well, let me refer to it by page number. Um, from page 21 through 21, yeah. So um, 21 is a sample. We'll in 21, 22, 23, and 24. Are the four properties. So 
if I understand the formatting correctly, this is simply represents a table which will be expanded with text once the text is inserted. So it will continue for other pages beyond that. Absolutely. Correct? Yeah, that, that's how it was designed. Okay. So, and, and so um, planning conferences, committee recommendations, priority uses, those are the things that we will fill in as, as time marches on. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Now let's have um, action items on the agenda. And then we'll refer to those. And we have four minutes. Okay. Huh. May I make a motion Four. to extend time? Uh, 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 yeah. uh, so, the agenda does not have an end time. It is customary that we end at 8 o'clock, but it's not a rule. So okay. We don't need to extend. Okay, thank you. You don't need a motion to extend. Uh, so the action item says calendar for future meeting days for public hearings. Um, originally, when we sat down and we discussed these things, um, we thought that we might actually be able to hold hearings in May, but I don't think that's possible. I think the hearings will probably end up um, toward the end of summer. So uh, we we were. We were discussing uh, days of the week earlier, and Thursdays were the weekdays that seemed appropriate. But I, I tell you truthfully, without the draft report, we can't hold um, public hearings. We need the draft report first. That's appropriate. So, um, so I'd like to postpone setting dates for public hearings um, until we get the draft report assembled. I wouldn't mind seeing us try to nail down these locations, though. So. Um, so the proposed the proposed locations were Mira Vista with respect to Adams Middle School, Helms with respect to Harmony Knowles and Seaview. And El Cerrito High with respect to Cordova, those are the um, school sites that are in some proximity, close proximity to the parcels that are affected. You have a comment, Tom? My concern is on Seaview. Helms is about two miles away. That's a long ways away from, from that community. Right. I'm just wondering if there are alternatives that might be closer. I, I don't even know what elementary schools are close by. I know where the charter schools are there. Calvin. What? Um, I was going to say the community center at Montara Bay is a that could be an option. Yeah, that would be. I mean, uh, as long as they don't charge us. Yeah, well, that's that's the issue. We can we can meet at a public school and not break a budget. Yeah, and I said that, I don't know that community with the exact location of elementary schools. Does anybody have any ideas? Well, but it doesn't matter. Let, let staff come up with some ideas. Yeah, I have a later date and time. Lewis has a rolling well, map in his mind, yeah, and he will be board. back tomorrow. So I assure you, um, you know that that we'll do everything that we can to accommodate, and we'll come back to the next meeting with some other proposed locations. Um, I'm not saying that Helms is out of the question, but I just would like to find something closer to the community around Seaview. Uh -huh. uh, Bayview Elementary, Highland Elementary. Uh, with respect to Harmon Knowles, um, Lake, Bay Reed Soska Middle School. Those are all a long ways away. I mean, it'd be much farther away than, than Helms almost. I think Montalban is the closest for Seaview. Probably. It, it, Highland is eight houses up from me. We're talking Seaview. Yeah. 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 Not all about you. Yeah, so, Harmonold uh, and Seaview. They're proposing sorry. they're proposing homes for both Harmonold and Seaview. Yes, and, and, and I said I, and I was saying I have no problem with homes for, for Harmon Knowles, but I think just for Seaview, that's much farther yeah, away. Yeah. Okay. So even as the crow flies. So and, and, be, as people drive, it's even further. 
So we'd be talking about four meetings, not three. The, the idea of three is to combine harm and And I guess so, I wonder if we do need to wait for Lewis on this, because the other question is, um, if we were to use an elementary school, um, is there a space big enough? Right, like we know El Cerrito High School, there's a space big enough for a public meeting, but is that true at Montalvin? Yeah, I, I'm just curious. I was just wondering how many people would show for these items. I don't, I don't, we're, I'm assuming massive. <laughs> but it, you can have outside that. field. <laughs> okay, fine. So you're saying a classroom. So you, you have the, the Rolling Stones going to open up the act? Yeah, we got to dream big sometimes. Okay, so um, it seems to me listening to the discussion that we should get Lewis Freeze involved in uh, working this site, determining the site for a fourth meeting with respect to CU. And so with respect to setting a calendar or, or actions for that, um, I think I think we can move this item to the next meeting. And if there are no objections, Okay, so um, so our next meeting will also add tonight's item E1. And that brings us to conclusion of so before we yes. we never have an opportunity to even offer or ask for ask for future agenda items. Uh what, should, what would you like to add? I'd like to, to have a presentation on workforce housing. Uh, school districts that have been successful with it as opposed to unsuccessful because we're getting two conflicting reports, one from a couple of trustees and one from the chair realtors. Completely different on there. Uh, but also uh, other options like exchanges or selling. Uh, we, this was given to the school district once. It was given to us, the uh, previous committee, but uh, I, I would like to see a hear another presentation uh, so we so this entire group can have a better feel for what's going on before we make a recommendation. I, I, the workforce housing in particular is there. That's so key because we've got so many of the school board members. I wrote down workforce housing, but what was this, the, the others? On uh, uh, exchange or, or sale. I thought we had that with um, Tara Reels. Well, we did, but not necessarily the, the newbies. Okay. And you want to go even further back to 2020, it was Tony Wool brought it for the school district. Okay. okay. Um, so you're about putting on the agenda. We're going to write down and go from there. Any other items to add? Okay. It is now 8.04. And uh, I declare the meeting for adjourned. So our next meeting on the 21st of May at this site. Thank you all for coming.